Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. Who, <laughs> messy distance professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Wicker Man. Tell my people, my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss Booking the Territory. Oh, yeah. This is a one man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast, where today we're covering NWA Saturday Night on TBS from February the 11th of 1989, second week in February. Doc, I'm sitting here with you, uh, Mr. Paperwork, Hard Body Hopper, just texted. He said he is going to be here, however, he is running late, and if anybody wants to know why we're starting without him, it's because we're running up against the clock tonight, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, plus, with Harper, when he says 10 minutes late, that could mean 5 minutes or it can mean 35 minutes. So We may not hear from him tonight. If you guys get to hear him, you know, consider yourself blessed. I'm considering that i got to put on my working boots here and drag you through this show. Mm, I don't know about that. Hey, our, our birthday month rages on, huh? Birthday month <laughs> rages on. Yes, that's right. We're still in June of 2020. And by the way, uh, this is for you and I and Hopper once he joins us. This is the first sh- first NWA show we've done in three years and nine months since Smoky Mountain uh, is over. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Basically, there is no Smoky Mountain show that will come out this coming Sunday because we wrapped that show up last Sunday, if my uh, math is correct. So this is uh this is it. This is the free show that everybody gets from here on out. Oh man, what do, what are we gonna do next? I don't know, but let me let me say something. Um Uh oh. That that no 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 no. That finishing that show in an entire territory was a hell of a sense of accomplishment. It really was. I mean we we did something. I mean, we didn't cure cancer or <laughs> Right, right, right come up with the vaccine or anything but you know i mean how many you know that's it's an accomplishment i'll say that i agree yeah man we live loved and laughed our way all the way through three years and nine months i think back to to the Koloffs, ivan and vladimir all the way through hey hey you tell that conro hey some bitch he kissed my ass all the way well, to tommy rich you know we we saw it all the good the bad in the horner. Speaking of Tommy Rich, remind me of something when we get into this, the NWA part of the show. I don't want to say it now. So remind you of something when we get into the show. Boy, yes, when we get to the review You get part. mad at me. If, you get mad at me for pronouns. But come on. <laughs> you are the worst. You're trying to tell me it earlier. I'm like, goddamn pal pronouns. What do you mean it? What is it? And Because you were talking about four different things. And you throw out it. Which hey, it are we talking about here? I'm a busy guy. I got lots of different conversations going on. I need you to keep up with which one I'm talking about. Sure, whatever you say. All right. Hey, before we get into things, a uh, special shout out to our largest patron contributors monthly. Disrespectfully classy Marky Blassie, Kyle Riley, Mike Childry, Joe Ice. Thank you for your generous patronage each and every month. And I'm going to keep going and go through uh, some Patreon shout outs. Couple we got here. Uh, Jose Corona, thank you for coming back to Patreon. Glad things are going better for you, my man. Brian Carlos, thank you for joining Patreon and the BTT Hall of Fame wing. Jim's Ramon, a Patreon member. He had been a patron. He bumped up his pledge and is now a Hall of Famer. Daniel Reyes, new BTT Hall of Fame Patreon member. Carl Olson, new BTT Patreon member. Brad Peterson, new P- new Patreon member. Uh, Eon Heffernan, 
Hefferman, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, he came back to Patreon as well. And then one more, Doc, you love this guy's name. I don't know his real name. I assume it's a guy, but his name is work rate midget <laughs> on twitter <laughs> and uh i love i love the at work rate midget i, I gotta say a uh, long time patreon member he bumped up his pledge and uh whatnot so hey i wanted to tell you something too work rate midget you were talking about wildcat x rated and um and and do the wives come i can't remember that your exact dm i dm'd you back but basically um, only if she's hot well no i mean we tell the guys bring their wives. Uh, That's right, man. We can you know. swap. Well, you know, X rated. No, no. X rated is a no. X rated is a, is more of a social gathering and social event than it is wrestling. Yes, there's wrestling, but you can get there hour or two before you get your drink on. I mean, it's in a big bar room. It's in a huge bar room. So X rated is a social event. So yes, by all means, uh, for X rated. Bring the wives and girlfriends. We don't know when it's going to be this year or if it's going to be this year because it got postponed due to uh, what's going on in the world. But, hey, should it happen, please, by all means. I mean, I brought my wife last year, and uh, I suspect uh, more of the gentlemen out there will be bringing theirs. The only rule for X-rated is you got to be 18 uh, to get into the place or 21 because it's a bar. Never how, mind. Many 21. Times, how many times did, did Sasha say either suck her teeth like, and huff? Or say, why do these people like y'all? Uh, she was fine because she had um, a couple uh, of. Uh, who was she drinking that night? Was she drinking some Steve Weisers? No, what the hell was she drinking? I'm trying to remember. Does, does Sasha drink beer? No, nah, no, nah, she didn't drink beer. She didn't drink beer. I forgot. I don't know what she was drinking that night. She she was drinking something because she was. I can't nice imagine and buzzed. a human a human that doesn't drink beer. I mean, like, I don't prefer beer. I don't. It's not my drink of choice. Grape soda, right? <sighs> you say some dumb stuff. You know that. Um, I'm trying Mr. to figure out who's more intelligent, you or Tommy Rich? Probably Tommy Rich. He knew what he mm. had to do to get the belt. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> Doc. Now let me tell you something, man. You gotta stop that because look. Look, you, all this cornrows some bitch can talk about me. Now, now I thought me and you were on better terms, all right? So you stop that. Don't you worry about what I lube my throat up with to go down on Jim Barnett, all right? God almighty. <laughs> Harper can't get here fast enough. <laughs> all right, what were you saying? Probably. I mean, you cut out on me, son. My bad. I hit a button. I hit the mute button by accident. Trying to mute me. I told you no, don't do that. I wasn't trying to mute you. Uh, but uh, where are we going? Oh, so, yes. Thank you for all the Patreon members who came back. Hey, and, uh, moved all those over patrons, and all those patronage dollars, if you think they don't matter, they really, really do. I mean, we joke about this and go round and round on it. But, I mean, this really does help us keep going. Um, it helps us celebrate our birthday month in style. We know that times are tough. So uh, we really do appreciate it, and I promise you that when Mike talks bad about all y'all during the day, I tell him to to knock it off. Hey, Harper's on while you're trying to make a stupid joke well, over there, so I'm comfortable. Well, I'll be now. I'll be damned. Yeah, it, eleven minutes it late. <laughs> there he is. Okay, what y'all doing? Rolling. We're rolling. We're we're already recording. recording. Podca- you... We're re- recording a classic wrestling podcast. Y'all awesome. Yeah, with all of our bu- best buddies and pals. Oh. And Mike. And Mike. So, and so Mike. Um, do you want to ask Hopper how he's doing before you do your shout-outs, Doc? Yeah, how are you doing, buddy? I'm fucking... I, I want to get furloughed again. <laughs> well, why? Why? Because fuck this work shit. <laughs> he's tired. Well, I gotta he is of, exhausted. I gotta... <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, I got a question for you. you. You know, you do a lot of work in it. Your job takes you all around the community, we'll say, right? Yeah. You've been wearing a mask? Yeah. All in the time? In you have to, yeah. Well, you wait. During the day, but at night you don't have to, right? If you go into uh, a store and, like, if you go into Walmart or the grocery store and, uh, in the wall and say they they uh, make you put a mask on 
<laughs> See, you were wearing a Halloween mask. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I like how you covered that with a Halloween one. That way we don't get in trouble with the streaming service that this thing Oh, there you go. Some of our there you go. Okay? See, I know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, okay, well. A face uh, cover. A face cover, yeah. That's, that's... There you go. So a are you, uh, I think what everybody's most interested in is, have you still been out in the bar scene slaying ass since you went back to work? Uh, I mean, I mean, not as much to say the least. We're, the shoot job will really take that shit out of you, won't it? Yeah, it does. It fucking sucks. Dude, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me jump in here. He went from 24-7 furlough, basically wake up when you want, go to bed when you yeah. want, and his girl it's was on call. It, it, so you go from, it's like it, he went cold turkey to from that to now he's punching the clock. I mean, of course yeah, he's going to be frustrated in time. Here's that to a thousand. Here's that damn Pac-Man alarm clock go off. He's like, God damn. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, Doc. You gotta imagine for for weeks. This this fool months. months. Well, I mean, I don't know. You weren't you weren't slaying that that one thing for months, is what I'm saying. That's you nice. Were. That that one thing. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to give out no names yeah, or nothing so, here, bro. Is it, to... is it is it stretched out back there yet? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Classy people. <laughs> well, I mean, the ass will only be elastic. It loses elasticity after a while if you keep pounding it. Uh, does it? What the hell, Harper? You know, for the, uh, the 16th week in a row here, I joined the damn show, and of course, you know, the minute you get on, I try to listen, I try to support you guys, and this freaking jabroni over here, he's talking about elasticity of the ass and all that. What the hell, Harper? I mean, how am I supposed to listen to wrestling? I thought this was a wrestling podcast, man. Yeah, but talk about Bruno. How come y'all bring up Bruno? <laughs> bring up Harley Race. Ah, settle down, Darren. It's okay. <laughs> oh boy! All right. So, <laughs> what, what time? Are... What time are you waking up every morning to go to work, Harper? Six thirty. I don't feel sorry for you now. You see, that's what time I I, I got to work today. Well, the wolf. Well, that's your problem. It sure is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the man went from from. Waking up when he wanted. Living, going to he bed went when he from wanted. living the dream to. Yeah, from being a kid on spring break to being a. Uh... a Plymouth Rock <laughs> landed on him. Yeah, fucking <laughs> to a middle aged man waking up and going to work and hating life. All of a sudden, Dude, you know what he, he he was living like a rich person for for a while. I was basically, I was a, screw, I was a kid. Screw all day. Fuck Stay all day, all night. get, get fucked right. up every night, and do whatever the fuck I wanted. Yeah, sounds like well, fun. Yeah, good work if you can get it. it. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Oh well. Okay, uh, Doc. Uh, what else we got? You got some shout outs, or what you got to get in here? Yeah, I'll throw some shout outs. Uh, Fritz von Mulkey made me laugh uh, earlier today. That guy. Over, yeah, he was talking. You know. In a really interesting move, and I'm glad to hear it. You know, Aunt Jemima's going away. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, but he... Are they going to change the name or just the logo? I don't know, but he responded to this on Twitter, to the news story, by saying, how am I expected to be able to masturbate while eating pancakes now? Exactly. Right, Mike? I do I do this as a, I do this as an outlet, not to... Not to... Yeah. You well, I, mean, come on, I got. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I just live in this world. Um, no, that's your we got problem, an- not ours. We got another one here. A Jonathan Komu, Komu. Yes. He's a Steelers fan all of his life, and he wants to know what I think about the Hall of Fame game between Dallas and Pittsburgh going down with no fans. And I said, you don't watch preseason. Oh, you know what I root for in preseason? No, no injuries. injuries, and this year no positives. <laughs> it was too late already on that one. Oh I yeah, know. we all are fucked. <laughs> because no. your running back is out there eating ass on every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, and he's Harper. got that thing that's going around. See, Harper, you need to be worried about that. You're going to get the same thing. <laughs> I'm all right, man. Right, Mike? 
I think <laughs> Hopper. Mike's not the doctor here. Hold on. No, no, hold on. Hopper, did you swim in Lake Pontchartrain as a kid? Fuck no. Oh, well, I was going to say you're immune to it if you did, but never mind. Oh, God. <laughs> you know my ass went swimming in that old dirty ass thing. I bet so. you did, you black asshole. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Come on. Oh. Uh, did you did you swim in it, or did you just kind of walk across the, the slime? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I don't, everybody out there listen to this. They say it's safe to swim in it now, I believe. Yeah. Even though yeah, it's still was, filthy. That wasn't. that wasn't now. So anybody out there listening, you got to like Google pictures of Lake Pontchartrain from like the 1980s. And you'll see what we're talking about. I mean, it was a cesspool and we swam in that shit <sighs> until they stopped the us. The beer bottles I threw in that fucking lake. That's the least of my worries of the, is the beer bottles. Yeah. Syringes. <laughs> okay. Ah, the sewerage. But anyway, okay, Doc, uh, keep going with your spotlights. Um, and then over on the uh, over on the other piece of the pie, uh, and I think you mentioned this young man earlier, uh, Daniel Reyes, and he's uh, either Daniel Reyes nineteen, or yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, we got a five star review out of him, so we're kind of done with him. Oh wait, he pays money, so we love you, dude. Um, he writes. A uh, great podcast. Guys are hilarious. He must mean me and Harper. Yeah. And I feel like I'm in their living room just watching classic wrestling. This drove... Listen to this, Harper. This drove me to cancel my Sirius subscription today so I could sign up for the Patreon and the only audio I will be paying for. Book I like him already. Man, that's a in- guy... He is. He didn't steal it. He is. He's got a college education and a criminal record. He knows how to make decisions. <laughs> okay, New Jack. <laughs> quoting, <laughs> quoting New Jack promos over here. That's nice. You know, uh, Chuck Gardner's got a girlfriend now. Mm, Gunter is his name. That's your buddy. Yeah, you know whatever. Close enough. <laughs> what? What are we? Who are we talking about? Chuck. Chuck, it's Chuck. Harper's, Harper's buddy. He goes to all the Wildcat shows, and he's a patron, isn't he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> for like what a the month. fuck? Well, 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 just fucking delete this. <laughs> he's gonna hear this. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't look. I don't judge anybody like that, man. Maybe he had. A, maybe he fell upon hard times, if you will. <laughs> and the textile, the textile workers <laughs> get kicked in the booty, and they give him a watch and tell him thank you. Thank you for all your years. <laughs> so you said anyway. he got a girlfriend, and I don't know who this is. So it sounds like what he pulled off was an amazing feat. So yeah, well, which, she's a very attractive young woman. Oh, no. And it's, it's a Facebook official. Oh, no. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Doc, do you know how happy I am every day that I am not one of these people or that I was, like, married and, I guess, settled down before the whole Facebook thing, like, took off? Because you see these people who are in and out of relationships, like... Uh, oh, the worst is, on there. It's, compli- it's complicated. Yeah, Jeez. get a fucking life. Hey, hey, make and it, let me tell you something. Let me clean something Make it up uncomplicated. No, I, I'm not judging people on bouncing through relationships. My My point is, is like the broadcast nature of it. Like, there was this right. one ex-coworker of, of, of mine who... I swear needed medical help from the every three months being in love to now moving on to the next love of the life that was for a lifetime. And this person has had 16 love of the lifetimes in four years. That's not a good batting average. All I'm saying is I don't care if you're doing that, but man, you make yourself look bad if you just posted it nonstop. Yeah. I would never be Facebook official. I would just be fucking reality official. (laughs) I love it. Uh, Do people still use Facebook? I check in every now and then. Yeah, I kind of like poke my head in for like five seconds and like, nope, you still idiots. Bye bye. <laughs> I check in every now and then. This show is the only reason I have Twitter and Facebook. Otherwise, I would have to just be like, all right, it's been nice. I'm telling you, it's liberating. 
Yeah. There are too many. There's too many good people with the BTT army that I, that's the only reason I haven't deserted it at this point. Yeah. Now, what else you got, Doc? Before we uh, get into Saturday night. Man, I was just trying to stumble around because I got to tell you, I watched this Saturday night so long ago, I don't remember a damn bit of it. I figures that. I mean, come on. Seriously? Well I, well, I watched it a long time ago. I drank while I watched it, and I've drank every day since. And man, I got to tell you, when you don't leave the house a lot, these days are starting to really run together. They do. So y'all have it going back to the office? No. Doc? No. Oh. Um, may not be may not be going back, pal. The, oh, the wow. American workplace is changing. Yeah. <laughs> the American workplace. Yeah, that fucking Michael Scott shit's fucking that's over with. Mm-hmm. What? No, I wouldn't do that for. Michael Scott from the office. Oh. Fuck Mike. I didn't. On, I didn't. Mike. Oh, Jesus Christ. Doc doesn't even know what that is because he doesn't like The Office because he says it's too much like his real life. <laughs> but I know what. But I know what it is. I didn't hear. Man, you're an idiot. You're just fucking stupid. Okay. All right. Uh, y'all want to get into Saturday night, February 11th, Let's 1989. Roll. So I here, think we, sh- we should. Yeah, I think we should too. I, I want to. I want to remind everyone as we get into this week's episode of Saturday Night. Uh, we have a Clash of the Champions. Doc and I are actually recording it tomorrow. And that will be out, I guess, a day or two after this one. You give this one about 24 hours to drop. Can I tell yeah. him? Can I tell Harper what's happening? What? Bro, he's trying to replace you now. I, kn- week- I knew you were going to say that. I That's knew nice. you were going to say last that. Week, last week it was let's replace Doc. Now it's re- Harper. Harper can't do it. So he didn't even ask you. And he's calling that I in the, I, the, I he's knew, in CT. I knew he was going to say that. No, Who? I said this a while ago. Copper said it would be hard for him to do the clash. Yeah. Hard, but not impossible. Okay. Fuck so, that. so what I want to do is Harper is going to sit out the clash. We're going to bring in sit Robert. Out. Sit out the clash. Boy, that's a. Mm. We're going to bring in. Robert Silva, who is just like Harper, loves talking about eating ass. <laughs> and, That's insane. and and whatnot. So we're gonna bring in we we're, we're gonna we're gonna bring in Silva to do the clash. And then next week, Harper, I'm giving you a week and a half notice. Next week, Doc, we what are we gonna do it on Friday night next week? We have to yes. do the Chi Town Rumble, the big pay per view, which is a really good pay per view with the three of us, because there's a lot of good shit on that card. All right. So that that that's what's going on. So now he's trying to force this stupid chemistry on me tomorrow night. There he of, goes. There he goes. Nice. Let me hang out with Harper. There he's trying to force Paul Roma on you. But I'm there telling you, this guy's going to be a great horseman. Yeah. There he goes. So I'm not putting little... up with it. I mean, I'll put that. I'll put. I don't care what he thinks he is. I'll put him back in his place. <laughs> hey, where's Lance? Um. No, Lance. Hey, even call Lance. Guys. Who is that? Yeah, hey. you know why? Why? Affirmative I'm action. Affirmative oh. action. Did you really say that? What's wrong with you? I'm just saying, Harper, we might want to start, you know, protecting hey, can ourselves. I, can I play something? This is a preview of what you're going to hear on the class show. Give me a second. I'm getting it queued up. Let's see how long it takes to launch. No, no different than than Harper and Missy. Hi, right, Harper? Yeah, bro. I fucked it, bro. <laughs> and, and Tabby, right, Harper? Yes. <laughs> oh. uh, Wait for uh, it. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could. Well, well, uh, Harper's got to get that penicillin I, shot every week anyway. So that's nice. Let me tell you something. Angela Bassett is sixty-one or sixty-two. I'd eat the shit out of her ass. She looks <laughs> not. <laughs> so that's who will be joining us for the clash. <laughs> You're proud of that. Oh, wow. very we proud. Grow up. Very proud. I just, I just that right there let probably tell, sealed the me, deal for why Darren that. will never sign up for I, Patreon. I can, I can hear that and tell you how that happened. That is Mike trying to in, over-engineer the magic. 
The magic happens when Harper and I stumble across a topic that generates that. Not when you force it and go, Silva, Silva, talk about eating ass tonight. That's actually not what happened. See? See? I know. That's not what happened. Silva has some questions for Harper. So he's so so hold on, Doc. You're gonna love this. Silva's asking asking Harper these questions about these different women. And Harper is doing his Harper thing where he gives his one word answers. You know what the hell I'm talking about. I appreciate that, Harper, because I didn't even get asked to come on the show. Yeah. Now we're just letting every spare listener who's ever contributed a nickel to this thing on here. Great precedent that sets. Actually, I don't know what you're talking about there. Uh, Those are friends of mine. But anyway, so so Harper's giving these one word answers the whole time. Silva's asking him about this woman or that woman. So there was no prompting. Silva just went off on his own talking about what he was going to do to Angela Bassett. There we go. That's All right. We need somebody to go into business for themselves. Super duper. Well, you do it every week. So what's the difference? You but tell anyway. him, to, him to mind his P's and Q's tomorrow night. So Doc's talking a tough game right now. And by the time we record tomorrow with Silva, Doc and Silva will be best friends because that's how Doc is. He's very non-confrontational. Okay. Uh, Doc, let's get into February 11th of 1989. How does that sound, hey, good buddy? Well, good I like that. This is the go-home show for the for the clash that we're recording tomorrow. It's also three days before Fe- uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> President's <laughs> Day. That's a February, right? That's the way- what? <laughs> Uh, what? Hubbard, Hubbard, day. Hubbard yeah, don't it. let him don't let him do that to you. Don't don't let him do this to you. Let him do what? I nobody does anything to Harper. Harper does things to people. No, you 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 want you want him to say that February fourteenth holiday and he says it and then you laugh at him. That's stop nice. trying to pit stop trying to pit me and Harper against each other. How about it's that? It's what you do. You're an asshole. That's how you do him. No. Okay. All right, so uh, this show opens up with a quick clip of Flair hey, and Steamboat hey, hey, mixing hey, it up. Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that the the Hawks must be taking one up the ass from the Celtics tonight because it's a short one? Actually, I yeah. looked and I don't think there was a Hawks game this night. I don't know why there was only a forty-five minute, forty-eight minute episode. I looked. I don't know what the deal is this week. Man, I don't care if Andy Griffith was fucking. We're <laughs> walking down Main Street of Mayberry with his dick out. 48 minutes is awesome. Hold yeah, on. really. Hubbard, what was Andy Griffin's wife's name in that show? He Aunt was B. a widow. He was a widower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's the name I was thinking. I thought Doc was about to say, I don't care if Andy Griffin was plowing Aunt B. I'll take a 48-minute episode. That's nice. That was his aunt, wasn't it? I don't know. They had I don't a, know. That's why I'm asking who. Because he was a widower. I don't know, man. He's down in the town square doing the helicopter trick with his dick. That's on nice. On the Andy Griffith Marathon so that we don't have to sit through two hours of this shit. <laughs> Shazam, Shazam. <laughs> Gomer Paul's down in the clock tower picking off the desk. <laughs> Gomer Paul's down there plowing. Well, Gomer Powell would have been nailing other buck privates, right? That's nice. Yeah, he was gay, wasn't he? I think so. Hey, man, to each his own. Name yeah. his real name. His real life name was Jim Neighbors. Hey, if he wants to go to um, if he wants to go to Tommy Rich route, man, all power to him. What? I'm happy for him. Whoa, 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 whoa. He owned a bunch of uh, was it uh, fucking uh, what's that nut uh? So farms in fucking Hawaii. Macadamia? Yeah, I think that was it. One of those fucking nuts. <laughs> what are you talking about? He owned the fucking farms in fucking Hawaii. Harper <laughs> sat up on furlough and instead of banging ass, that was a lie. He just sat up and got real wasted and read all of Wikipedia one night. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Harper can drop random facts on you that you'd be like, how the hell you know that? See? <laughs> Now I'm now I'm down a, a rabbit hole trying to Jesus Christ. What? You just googled it? Mike 
Neighbors began vacationing in Hawaii in the 60s and in 1976 moved from Bel Air to Honolulu. For 25 years, he owned a macadamia plantation on Maui See? before selling it to the National Tropical Botanical Garden. You see? What the flying fuck? That's what Gomo Powell did when he got out the Marine Corps. Dude, he did not get married to his man friend until 2013. He was 83 years old when he got Jesus. married. Jesus. Well, you know, sometimes Damn. people get married late. <laughs> I guess. Damn. 83. He was old. Holy crap. How the hell did Harper know about the macadamia nuts? I, 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 I know this shit. Man, could you you could see taking Harper to like a trivia competition. And, and you know, he's not going to get the operas or the musicals. And to be honest, neither am I. But if you land on the right categories, Harper's walking away with the trophy. Oh, yeah, bro. They, they got that Jeopardy on, on the fucking uh, Echo. I'll fuck that thing up. You got like. Breakfast cereals and fucking toys from the eighties, and I'd like ass toys for two hundred, mm. Alex. <laughs> the breakfast cereal episode was tremendous because he he was like a damn encyclopedia on breakfast. Uh, that Patreon episode we did, he was like an encyclopedia. I know. Yeah, it, 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 it was it was crazy. So, all right, um, I tell can you what, we finally we, talk. Can we talk about? Well, Madden looks fucking drunk, huh? Right here. <laughs> Where I paused it? Yes. He, yeah. He also kind of looks like a stiff wind might blow him over. Come well, on. Let's let's go to the opening. Like I said, well, we had the opening already. JR Magnum Welcome is in. And then we're about to hear from Ric Flair, who's going to be out there with Hiro Matsuda. Uh, here that is. It's Nature Boy Ric Flair. And if you were with us this morning, if you weren't, you certainly should have been. We saw Flair in a situation that I have never seen him in before. Uh, completely deranged, and I hope that we will be able to have a, I hope, and I mean this sincerely, that we can have a civil conversation here tonight on this program. Well, let me be the first <laughs> to apologize to you and to anybody else. If I upset the people in this great production, that's something I'll have to live with, because as I said this morning, and I'll say tomorrow or any other time I feel like it, because when you're Ric Flair, you can say no raw. The bottom line is, all these morons get out of the way. You know, the bottom line is, Steamboat, you're back in NWA. You have gone out of your way with the help of the professional people here at TBS. And I'm talking to you, Ross, to embarrass me and to make me look bad. That's almost an impossibility. As you can see, I am still, woo, custom made. I am still riding in long limousines. I am flying in private Lear jets. I ride around in the company of some of the wealthiest people in the world. And as I said before, Steamboat, you are the kind of man that personally I don't like. For openers, you're a one-woman man. I like all kinds of women. Number two, I like to walk out here and talk about life as it is. Life in the fast lane. That spells out Ric Flair, the nature boy. Bottom line, the 20th of this month and i want to say to you if you make it to the 20th monday night shy town rumble pal you have got to beat the world's heavyweight champion no talk no brag nothing right here no tag team match you and me all alone you have got to beat the world's heavyweight champion. And you know what, brother? That's going to be a big job for you. And I'll tell you something else. Ross and Ted Turner and all these other idiots. 
if I want to walk the streets of Atlanta, Georgia with LaToya Jackson, I'll do it because I'm Ric Flair. Woo! Well, fans, he'll be with us uh, Wednesday night in Chicago, and they're just walking right by the camera. They have no regard for anything. Fans, the total package is on his. Uh, Doc, thoughts on Ric Flair right there? How easy is Matt Suda's job? Yeah, really. I, I'm I'm going to stand here like a man, like a an Asian mannequin. <laughs> That's that. Get used to it. But we said this last week. It's better that he doesn't speak. He doesn't um, have to. Right. So, you got to remember the, the whole gimmick was uh, the money. I mean, he was he was he was so a they're, money man. They're they're alluding to the morning program. So obviously. Rick lost his cool, but Rick's got his cool back a little bit, and he's telling you the same thing we hear, whether it's Steamboat, Luger, Sting, Dusty, Garvin, whomever. I'm the champ, and you got to come get it. And oh, by the way, that's no easy task. And I'm going to show you with no talk, no brag, no nothing else, when we get in the ring at the pay-per-view, why Steamboat's going to fall just like everybody else does. No lies detected. Hopper, you got now, anything from now, it? Now, here's the other piece I have for you, Mike. Mm. Who was hotter, LaToya Jackson or Janet Jackson? Janet. Janet. Okay, but who was crazier? LaToya. So you might, if you could only have one, you might want to take LaToya if she's passable looking because she might let you do crazier things with her, right? That's nice. Mm. No. It's Miss, it's Miss Janet if it's not there. Right. No, I'm no, I don't no no. Who's that eating that nasty food, Michael Mills? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, were you a part of the Rhythm Nation? <laughs> sure, I was a Janet fan. I mean, uh, okay. Janet was something else back in the day, man. Whew, was she still remember is. that Rolling Stone or whatever where she had the guy's hands across her? Yeah, her, her boobies, boobs. her boobies. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was classy. It was super classy. Man. Yeah, Jan is something else, man. You missed Rhythm JJ Nation yet? Was, Rhythm Nation was... Was that 89 or 90? I, I don't know. I thought it was 1814. That might have that might have been around the time this aired. That's why I'm... That's why I'm, I'm, that's why I'm thinking that as you said it. Um... Nah, I'm I'm going with Janet. I don't want Latoya. Why? Thank you for asking, though. Because she had that psychic network or whatever. Oh yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember that. There ain't a damn one of those Jacksons that's got their head screwed on right, huh? Okay, uh-huh. here we go. Uh, Hopper, anything from Ric Flair right there? Bruh, was fucking Michael J. Fox the cameraman? Come on. <laughs> That camera was not steady at all. Jesus. Come what on, the man. hell, Hopper? What? Darren talks about it. Me and Doc, but good God. Man, that's nice. What are you... <laughs> Can you grow up? That's Come on. I mean, Michael Angel, he's... get control of this situation. He's got Parkinson's disease. Well, that's why you should wear condoms. <laughs> What? <laughs> Dude, William Bozart is going to drive off the road on that one tomorrow Har- when he's Harper working. Thinks, to this Harper, thinks, Harper thinks condoms cause autism. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows it's vaccines, dummy. Y'all going to hell. I'm not even laughing at that. <laughs> what? Y'all going to hell. Both of y'all. Uh, autism causes autism. That's y'all going to hell. What? I tell we you, who's going. About, we can't you talk know, about some stuff. No, no. I mean, we. You know, what we gonna talk about is Harper's talking about the cameraman. We gonna talk about how they can't figure out the picture in picture when it comes Bro, to Saturday this is night. Some fucking Jesus Christ! Fucking access bullshit, bro. Bro, uh. they can't figure it out. Luger is in a ring wrestling an enhancement talent match against Kip Montana, and they ain't figured out how That's to not take up a court. Bruh, 
They got it all. It's taken up a quarter of the ring, the inset <laughs> promo. Barry Windham is on picture in picture at the top left quarter of the screen as they shoot the match with the hard camera. Do you they, know how you have to purposefully be that bad? Oh, God. Because otherwise you would, you would be like, wait a minute, that's not right. It's broken record time. Tony Schiavone repeatedly says, how the hell were we a TV company and we kept doing stuff like this? And he's right. The thing is, the box isn't. It, it, it's there's not even straight. No, there's <laughs> nothing about this that's right. Look, look, look. Okay. Look this thing right. well, okay. That's okay. a good point. Too. I pause. At this point, they should <laughs> shut up. They should just move the box to this absolute dead center of the TV screen. Look, I, look. I know it. I know this is a nothing happening match. Okay, I realize that, but no, I paused not. it. I, hold on. I paused it right here for a second. The, the, both wrestlers and the referee are literally behind the pitcher and pitcher. That's yeah. just that is a fireable <laughs> offense. It's inexcusable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Look at this shit. <laughs> oh God. I look at it go again. Look. Okay. Times me, fucking you know that guy probably called off and was like, "Dude, I'm gonna be on fucking uh, national TV." You mean Kit Montana, otherwise known as Billy Gunn, making yeah. his debut? There we go. I'm glad you pointed it out. But it is amazing, Mister Ass. B- but but it is amazing that he's covered up for most of it by the picture and picture. Uh, wait, Doc, are you sure this is the first time we've seen him on here? I think we've seen him before, actually. I haven't. Okay, maybe I'm... God, look at that, the, the fucking camera. <laughs> WWE must be taking notes of this episode because um, that's what they do nowadays. They constantly shake the camera. Oh, God. All right. Doc, any thoughts on Luger defeating Kip Montana here? Montana looks all right. I mean, you know. He's a big guy. Yeah, I agree. There you are in the crowd. No, I'm not even uh, addressing that. Uh, Hubber, any other thoughts on this match? Uh-huh. <laughs> He's so frustrated. Nah. <laughs> there it is, Doc. Valentine's Day. Massacre. All right. Well, tell you what. Let's go to... That. That's the at, battle look... of the fucking mullets, huh? It's like That's he's going to come to fucking mullet. challenge him. Why can't mm-hmm. they tell the talent to stay out of the fucking camera way? I don't know what's going on with the camera work in this episode, but with all that said... Jesus uh, Christ. Maybe it's 48 uh, minutes because it's the only 48 minutes they could salvage out of this abortion. Well, Luger defeats Kip Montana, and then we're going to go to Kim Cornette and the Midnight Express, who are... Um, yeah, this is good. Listen to Corny. Welcome back to World Championship Wrestling. The man at my side has got it all on the line coming up. You know, a lot of major championships on the line the upcoming weeks, but you have more than that on the line. You have a career itself. Let me ask you a question. Did anybody ever wonder why they never heard of Pauly Dangerously until just last year? Well, the answer was revealed in this issue of the Weekly Sun just out this week. It's revealed that wrestling manager Pauly Dangerously is in reality the former Ethel Goldbaum of Queens, New York, who was the victim under unfortunately, of an accidental sex change operation, but it also says that Dangerously plans to have the procedure reversed (laughs) on February 20th when his wrestling commitments come to an end. So I'll tell you what, Polly, to make your trip a little happier, I got you some airline guides just so you'll be able to check the schedules out. Of course, maybe you can hop on a crop duster, save a few bucks, except watch out for the spray because it kills pests like you. Let's see what else have I got. I got some car rental information. I got some hotel information places you can stay if you don't want to sleep in the bus station where you like to pick up your boyfriends or maybe just maybe you can hop in that broke down honda civic that you come in here on and putt putt your butt on out of dodge one way or another polly you're gonna go and i got your route all figured out randy mcnally called me up and he gave me this atlas and i got your route all figured out and i see that you're gonna end up in a hot place 
with four letters. The first one's H, the last one's L, and the middle one is E-L. And you know what that stands for? That stands for where I'm going to send you, Polly, because you're going to be out of the NWA. The Midnight Express, brother, beautiful Bobby and Sweet Stan, America's team, the favorite tag team in America today, are going to take care of Dennis Conner and Randy Rose. And when it comes to backfighting and cheap tactics and dirty tricks and cheap shots, we know more about being dirty SOBs than you'll ever know in your whole stinking life. And Polly, February 20th is your last day in the NWA. Well, let's go up the ring for some serious action. I guarantee you that was Cornette's real roadmap that he had in his vehicle uh, driving around various territories. But, uh, Doc. Uh, Remember when those to... things were valuable? I, yeah. I, I, yeah, my I dad used... always had one in a car. So when I first started wrestling, I had one. I mean, we had what? GPS. I mean, where are you going? <laughs> down a fucking street? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> He used to wrestle with the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Tommy yeah. Ritt. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. He had to carry Rod Price's bags all across the Southeast, too. Let me tell you something. When you're going to Shitsville, Alabama to wrestle, and it's up in northern Alabama somewhere, you you bring a road map. Trust me, okay? Yeah. Those things were valuable, man. There was no phones. There was no internet. There was no GPS. You needed that shit. I used to look through them, like in a back seat, and look. Okay, oh, that's the capital of fucking Montana. Oh, that's the population. Dude, that's how I, I do. I used, um, I had one like as a kid that like my mom just had. I don't know. How, I don't know why the hell she had it. We never went anywhere, and I used to just flip through that thing and just like, like the same thing, Hopper. Oh, that city's in this uh, state. Oh, that's the capital. Oh, look at this highway. And then you know you look at the big map of the whole United States, right? And then you look at it. I, dude, I did the same thing. Those things were valuable, and then, and like, they, like Doc and said. Then they had, yeah, they had that thing in the back where you could see how many miles it was from city to city. Yeah. Uh, see, Hopper, fuck. Hopper, Hopper's dad probably had a nice one because they were like the Griswolds. Like they yeah. used to pile into the station wagon and go crisscross. I mean, you know, Hopper saw the stupid bear in 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 uh, what you call it and in the Smokies uh, in, in Gatlinburg. But yeah, right, because he he had been there before we did Smokey. Yeah, but those, I guarantee you that was that was Corny's. Uh, uh, keep going, uh, Doc. What you got? Man, he had his face put on the National Enquirer or the Sun or whatever that was, and he talked about boyfriends and reminded them that they're the dirtiest SOBs that that the Midnight his Midnight Express are. I did miss, uh, you know. It adds so much when Stan comes out looking like he did last week. I don't know how long we're going to go tonight, but I'm going to get Hopper's reaction to that. Right. Yeah, we well, up. let me tell you this. That's a great line. I would give a woman a sex change by mistake if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make a Play-Doh dick and just stick it up her pussy. That's nice. Is that supposed to be funny? I'm like chuckling. You went from I mean, a, you went from Ann to Stan. There you go. Where's my money? That's from the week. This is the Weekly Sun, and they 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 photo. Well, I don't say Photoshop. How did they, those they, How did those things stay in business for so long? Dude, I think still they here. still got those magazines, don't they? How? No. I don't know. How That's can the, wrestle, How can real wrestling be gone? But that shit survived. I wonder if fucking Carney, if 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 uh, Jim still has that that fucking magazine. I bet you he does. I bet you he's got that. I bet you he's got that dude. We he need don't... to get the guy from Starksville to fucking uh, send the question in <laughs> and, and, and ask it. Because he gets all his questions asked. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie from Starksville. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Doc gives woman sex change by mistake. Not the first Paul. time. And it's Paulie on the cover. That's nice. All right. <laughs> keep, keep going, Doc. What you got? <laughs> it reminds me of that time in Smoky Mountain that the rock and roll brought out a picture of Cornette's mom, and it was that dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like from like the, the fucking poster from the, the fucking troll fucking shit. From the book fair when you were yeah, in elementary uh, school. 
<laughs> like the kitty, like the kitty cat hanging on that says, "Hang in there." Yeah. They teased it the whole episode. They were like, we're going to show you Mama Cornette today. We're going to show you Mama Cornette. And Ricky Morton rolls up with the dog with the rollers in its hair. And Corny and threw a fit. Oh, it was glorious. But Smoky Mountain's over now. It's done. done. Okay, what else What else you got, Doc, from uh, Corny and the Midnight? Is there anything more 1989 than that color scheme that Corny's got thrown down there with the... Green, red, purple, and yellow pants. Yeah, it's like Miami Vice almost. Yeah, it's it's that same color of like the uh, the tile in your grandma's bathroom. Let me ask y'all a question. Uh, Does Stan look like he just got done <laughs> bending over something in the back at the cubicles in in Tech on Techwood Drive? Yeah, Stan's like, let's just let's just get this shit over with. He does. But the question would be, when doesn't he? Well, that's true, too, because last week he was very ridiculous. It looks like he had just got done with uh, servicing something backstage. Uh, Harper, you got anything else from this one? No. Doc, anything? I don't think so, my friend. Hacksaw Butch Reed defeats Trent Knight. Doc, any thoughts from Reed and Trent Knight? Yeah, when you, okay, right there. It's jumping on me. What? Come on, dude. I need the the, lo- the bar mean? camera side. There is a whale in yellow. Let's see. You got a timestamp? No. In the back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there she is. She's 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 in the dark. Well. Oh, there she is right there clapping. Go back, Mike. Ten seconds. That was her. Go back ten more. That'll take no, I, two hours. Yeah, it will. That, that that one, one, pause it. Look at that gut. Look at that. Bro, what the fuck's she wearing? A, a fucking Charlie Brown shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pressing play. Y'all are dirty. Y'all are dirty. No. Is that a belt? No, it's uh, something on the shirt. <laughs> if that was a belt, it was under a lot of distress. <laughs> Y'all are terrible, I, man. Why? So foul. So foul. Shut up. Making fun of these innocent people, some of which are probably dead now. Well, I'm sure that the diabetes got that one. Oh, my God. Speaking of diabetes, fucking know what I had for the first time last night? Uh, A a diabetic girl? (laughs) A fucking Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh, my God. Jesus. Why don't you just, here's what you do. You get a mouthful of Everclear Uh, and a mouthful of sugar. It was Kool-Aid. It's so it's so sweet that you can't even enjoy it. Right, exactly. It was so sweet I couldn't fucking drink it. You're like, you do this when it's done. It's it's like the the natural reaction is kind of like your our broads when they go, whatever. You go, mm, that's there's a lot, and, ugh. and then you give it to somebody. Yeah. Why did you have one? And at what time of night did this happen? This was like at nine o'clock. A friend of mine was uh, moving. And it was like taking crap out of his refrigerator. He was like, I'm going to throw these beers away. I was like, fuck, I, what? Throwing that shit away? I got a buddy who responded to uh, one of those, I don't know what it was, like e- eBay, Craigslist, neighborhood list. But somebody who was cleaning out their house and giving away beer. And he's like, I'll go and get it. We went, by, went by their house and got a box of beers. How much I'd beer be, was it? Like... A case, a different oh. kinds, but I'd be like afraid they stuck them up their ass first. That's nice. <laughs> man, That's people a big are, asshole. People, well, people are dirty, man. People are. I mean, you know, I could see somebody being a deviant enough to buy a case of beer and shove them up their ass just to then pass them off to somebody. Yeah. So Mike's hard lemonade, huh? Yeah, the fucking you know, purple ones. You know what's real bad is when you have the – well, that wouldn't be lemonade then, would it? Yeah, well, it was the, the Mike's Hard Lemonade, like Black Cherry Lemonade. They got like different flavors. So a Mike's Hard Black Cherry? Yeah, they got like a fucking Mike Hard, Mike Hard Lemonade, you know, strawberry and, you know, fucking watermelon and, and so on. <laughs> so it's not as good as White Claws, what you're saying. 
I can't drink that shit, man. The white claw's different. It's not that sweet. I'm telling you. Now, it tastes like soda. It. Like it tastes like seltzer, soda water. Yeah, exactly. So, so here's the, here's the big problem. See, Harper, you don't you don't live with this problem, but you get in one of these relationships with a broad where you live with her for a while. <laughs> you drink all your beers, and then you're done. You're like, shit, I have to drink all my beer. But, she, but she's got those fucking wine coolers in there. I'm going to go get one of those. And the, after 12 beers, you don't give a shit. So you drink like two or three of them. But all that sugar, the next day, you feel like somebody hit you in the head with a fucking hammer. Yeah, fuck that. That's real. Those are real problems. Yeah. That's hard time. Like huh? the, not, they ought to lead off the news with that tonight. Not this fake shit that everybody's talking about. Those are the real problems in the world. <laughs> uh... Hey, you know what, Mike? Not only is it our birthday month still, but by the time this comes out, it will have been Father's Day. Oh, what y'all doing for Sunday? What's the over and under on um all the single women that Gonna wish themselves happy Father's Day because they deserve it. Yeah, because they're hardworking people. And let me explain, because I have to cut this promo every year. As someone who was raised by a single mother, I don't want to hear shit from women who wish themselves a happy Father's Day. That's the message right there. That's it. Yeah, fuck that. It's not about you, bro. It's yeah, not you know, about yourself. you. There's a day called Mother's Day. You have that day. Let First off, let's go back one second, too. Dads don't have a day, really. So don't hijack the day we get. We don't ask for much. So stop trying to take the day we get. Because when you break it down, Christmas, birthdays, Valentine's. Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, anniversary, all that is for somebody else. It's never for the father, at least in my experience. And all of the men I know who are fathers agree with this message. So leave our one day alone. And God damn it, don't give us socks. Don't give us underwear. Don't give us cheap cologne. Don't give us cargoes. We don't want none of that. I'll take that. No, Actually, you know what you want? Maybe I maybe couple, I do want couple, cargoes. Yeah. I want a few of, pair though. What we, what we what we really want is a couple hours of peace and fucking quiet. Yeah. It take a fucking nice nap without someone bothering you. Jesus Christ, that's a that, that's a big ask. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be driving home from a weekend in the woods. You going to see Sasquatch? Yep. Mm. We'll go have some some beef jerky with Sasquatch. He never invites me, Hopper. I just want you to know that he always makes plans Man, about me. Black you people don't go in the woods. But he wants me. But he wants me. He wants my family to protect them when the war breaks out. He wants to know. That's nice. Shit. But 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 whenever it comes to going to the woods and, and where he's war? going, what's this war you speak of? The one you always tell me about, where you need to know the handshake. Well, yeah, Mike, you should give us like Mike Mills' card, so if we're confronted, <laughs> we can be like, hey, "Look, I with Mike. Here's the card." We know this guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. And they're, like, and they're like, "Man, he's. We're not sure what race he is, but he had twisty ties, so he'll pass." Yeah. Let me ask y'all a question. Eat. Oh, go ahead, Hopper. His his uh, first girlfriend was uh, Jamaica. She used to suck that dick, huh, Mike? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mary Night. Give me a break. Oh, yeah. I sure deserve it. <laughs> All right. We go now to a Lex Luger promo. I have nothing from it. I thought he was meat and potatoes, Doc. I thought he was good, but it's just meat and potatoes. What did you think? Hold on, I was playing one of my games here. I got to get over my notes. Hopper, did you have anything from it since he's over there? No, it's, it's fucking Luger doing his thing. 
Yeah. This seems like the type of thing that Javorski would crank off to, uh, just Luger out there kind of just doing his thing in a monotone way this week. This is a Javorski crank off moment. And I figured out something because I'm tired of getting DMs from people telling me to go look what Javorski posted in the Facebook group. Evidently, Javorski's got this infatuation with Tommy Rich, and he he wants to blow Tommy Rich like on the slick. Oh, no. So, it. wait, is he blowing Tommy Rich while Tommy Rich is blowing... Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait. So Vito was blowing the security guard? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Hopper. Keep going. <laughs> no, it, it was wrong. Vito was blowing <laughs> the security guard. Son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Polly Walnuts. Come on. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. It's like, it's like, I, it's like I got stabbed in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Dude, we Paulie Walnuts. It was like he, it was like he got told. He was like outraged. Like he was offended. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, and, and maybe instead of reviewing Sopranos for our next show, we should just act him out. <laughs> bust out laughing pass out scripts <laughs> uh have harper read the whole thing it's uh, richard <laughs> um uh, okay uh, now what the fuck am i looking at now well we go to dick murdoch and michael hayes versus and jyd Rick fucking uh he's he got a little lighter <laughs> no uh hayes and jyd aren't done just yet just so you know yes they are no they're not yes they they're are. they're gonna cut in a few weeks i can't remember exactly when it is they're gonna cut the most offensive promo to asian people you ever hear on tbs <laughs> and they are both ridiculously racist in what they do towards asian folks in this promo. And I'm going to leave it at that. But for right now. Hayes is out there swiveling his hips as normal. And Hayes and Murdoch. Defeat Rick Allen and Mike Thor. Doc anything from it? Doc. Hey. Hopper. Hopper you got anything from it since he stepped away? Or something? I wonder why that happened. I wonder why, why that happened. Why they had Dick Murdoch instead of JYD? Uh, you know Dick Murdoch comes in from time to time. That's all. Yeah. Not much to it. Um, but anyway, Doc, are you back? Doc, you must have went and got a beer, or or I'm sorry, a White Claw. Dude, I, so remember we were talking about it. They okay, but I I can't just drink them on a regular. I can't drink them, bro. I just don't. It's not my thing. Like, let me put it like this. On a scale of an IPA or that, it's better than an IPA. But I can't. Yes. I mean, I'm not like. Now, I will say it is better than that Mike's Hard Lemonade stuff because that stuff yeah. is so sweet. It makes you, it makes your gums hurt. Did I miss anything? Yeah, we were trying to ask you about Murdoch and, and Hayes, if you had anything. Oh, that match? I had to go get a beer. Yeah, I figured that. Anything from? Did you notice that? Did you notice that when Michael Hayes is wrestling with the black man, he wears his Confederate robe, but when he's with Dick Murdoch, he left it at home. I didn't pay attention. Okay. Did you notice in this, Mike, that this week? So this proves that last week was a work. Jr. said that Murdoch has now moved to Golden, Colorado. When just oh, last week right. his son was a senior at South Grand Prairie. Right until okay, so Hopper wasn't here. Jr. on commentary said that Murdoch's kid was a senior. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Harper, what's the old legend about Dick Murdoch? Ah, uh, it's so easy you're gonna forget it. What he asked uh, to work for course. Well, that's okay, that, them, but... that's part of it. Well, what's the other one? That he was a member of the... You, 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 did he suppose he have a card in his wallet? Yeah. So <laughs> for, the, last, for the clans. 
Yeah. yeah. So last week he's out there wrestling, and Jr. out of nowhere goes, and we know Dickie Murdoch's really proud of a son who's a senior at the South Grand Prairie High uh, Dragons. He's a member of the varsity football team. Well, it just so happens that South Grand Prairie High School is in the Dallas Metroplex where Mike and I live. Uh-huh. And the South Grand Prairie in 1989, 1999, 2009, 2019, and today has been the South Grand Prairie Warriors. So he, JR was saying it was the Dragons, because if you're in the clan, you're the Grand Dragon. I think it's a grand wizard, isn't it? It's a grand wizard. But yeah. there's also a dragon, isn't it? I don't think so. There is a dragon in it. Uh, uh, what the fuck does a dragon do? I forgot, but there is a How dragon. You get dragon? I'm, a, I'm afraid to Google this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is a level. There is a level. Like, not a, yeah. It's uh, like rank? Yeah, there's different ranks. There's different ranks. Don't ask me how I know this. Only because Man, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But if I'm, yeah, there, there's I think a, the there's a, is the, no. is the top guy, huh? If you want to call it that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are the the worst? I don't know. Yeah, because I, I think like David Duke was a grand wizard. Yeah, it's it's a wizard and no, then, no, there no. is a dragon. It's the grand dragon and the imperial wizard. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know what I was about to say, Doc? <laughs> One of our listeners out there in the KKK can confirm. It's Come far, on. We don't. It's far, you're like, oh, no, man, y'all got it wrong. <laughs> no. I, I mean, this is a Southern Wrestling podcast. I would not be shocked if a member of that organization listened to this show. He fast forward. They fast forward 10 seconds every time you speak and wait for Harper and I to talk. Yeah. <laughs> If they do that like we do to the to the advertisements on the real one real shows. Yeah. We hit like ten seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds. I'm never gonna buy this. Ten I'm seconds. I'm not gonna manscape. Yeah. Or, come on. I'm not bro. buying that fucking cereal. <laughs> okay. So we've confirmed it is the Grand Dragon and Imperial Wizard. So this week he said he moved to Golden, Colorado. So he, you know, that he worked for Coors. So JR's having some funny times with Murdoch. Yeah. Out there. Inside the baseball. The yeah. Grand Dragon. So last week his son was a varsity athlete, senior and varsity athlete. And they up and moved this week during his varsity season to get him to Colorado because that's where they make Coors. Come on. <laughs> JR is having fun. Okay. So, uh, Doc, anything else? Everything was airtight, brother. Everything was airtight. Um, so we then go to the next match, which immediately is thrown to the Royal Warriors and Precious Paul versus the Varsity Club in a six-man tag match with Cornette and JR on commentary. Now, we are told this is from the episode earlier this morning when they had, I guess, an hour of television. So... There you go. Uh, Ellering is not a small dude. I mean, he isn't as big as the Warriors, but he's still got some size on him. Uh, real quick, and I'll throw it to y'all in a second. The match does end uh, when I believe Hawk is thrown over the top rope and Tommy Young calls for a DQ. Cornette did pop me on commentary. He said the crowd has not seen this type of brutality before. Well, it's just three months ago, Corny, that they saw you, uh, you know, busted over from stem to stern by Paulie by Paulie's phone, where you were uh, juicing on the on the all over the TBS studio floor. So there's that. Anyway, um, they're not going to give you a clean finish because they're about to wrestle at the clash. Uh, so yeah. anyway, um, the, your you first, Doc. Anything from this? It really did highlight a, a point that you and I talked about last week, which is in terms of just pure talent, Corny would have been the right play for color commentary. Definitely. And that's why he does color in a few months. Or but, he does. you know, it takes him out of the good position he's in. It takes away a position for Magnum, so I get why they didn't do it. Um, here's another question. It probably would have paid less, huh? Commentary? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Would it? I mean, the 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 contracts that they end up on, they got 
what, 60 or was it 40 cents on a dollar? I always forget. I thought it was 40. Yeah, so, I mean, would it? <laughs> That's roll a back hard a, one. Roll back a little bit. No, no, roll back a little bit there. I'm Let not it, rolling back. It's going to freaking lock up on me. Jesus I'm tired of it locking up. Well. Come on, man. No, I know. He's terrible at this. I'm um, not terrible. It's just, it's it's this damn God. thing. These, this is okay, this is go. the match. This is the match I want to see right now. And I got to tell you, Doctor Death and Animal getting in there look like a shoot struggle. Because I mean, is. they made it look like they were struggling for advantage. That's two big horses, man. Yeah, buddy. Here they go. Well, oh, it's it's Animal and so. <laughs> look at Animal throwing them blows, though, son. You know, Sullivan's he, a short little sucker, but God damn it, man, he ain't backing down. He's a fire plug. He's going to get yeah. this. Look, he throws that clothesline, nothing. <laughs> These motherfuckers. Somebody mm. needs to tell him it's a work. All right. Hubbard, you got anything from this? All right, here we go. Here, look. Oh, here it is. Here, here you go. Is. Look. There, there. How's that? Dr. Death. That looks Dude, good, it's huh? It's a fucking treat, huh? Yeah, these guys are getting after it. Look, we're working for advantage. He's like, I dare you to fucking win. They're that working. was great, huh? They were. I mean, yes. they're, they're, they're throwing it in, but they're working. I mean, it's... Oh, well, of course they're working. They're if, But they're making it look great. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Hawks, Hawks looking a little wild right now, but no, it's, it's he, good. I mean, this is, the, why do you hate wrestling God, so much? look at that clothesline. He just, yeah, gave buddy. Dr. Death. Hey, look at that. He just ran over Rotunda. Oh man. All right, Harper, what'd you have from it? This These is bastards, fucking awesome. These bastards are not interested in flips, dives and bullshit. Look at Ellery, man. He's in good shape still right here. Yeah. Well, he was a bodybuilder back in the day in Mid-South. It's just his neck, right? Um, No, it was something else, I thought. Look at those drop he had, kicks. He had knee issues. He looks good, though. I mean, he's in good shape. I guarantee you right now, this is... Javorski is fucking beaten off to, the, to Ellery in this match. Why? This is what he does. Uh. That's what he oh. does. Right, Chris Apita? <laughs> I'm not interested in the masturbatory habits of our listeners. Mm. Hey, man, that's their business. More power that's to That's right. Them. It's their business, not mine. Okay, keep going, Doc. What you got? Uh, we're going to eventually get to an arm entry, you know? Yes. Oh. That's a nice little spot. Yeah. And it looked like he really hit his arm hard too on the, on the yeah. Ground. He be an animal. Goddamn power pronouns. God. And then he gets hit with the whole podium there. I mean, you got to do something to make the Road Warrior seem in, invincible, because well, otherwise. And like I said, this is this is probably the smart thing to do to to kind of hand this thing in a DQ when you know they're using foreign objects on the outside on animal. Because it's, I said, at, at some point, did he yell, God damn? I think so. Um, but w w look at the podium just exploded when it, when Hawk Man, threw They got to have in. like a. How many podiums have we gone through in the past six months? It started with Abdullah chewing on it. Oh, Two yeah. Three or four? Yeah. Uh, well, what I was about to say with this match is. There, I said at the clash. No, it's at the pay per view that they're going to battle. So they're not going to give away anything. Uh, a free win, or I don't say free win. But, but again, you know I mean. but again, that's a really nice setup for. Oh, I'd like. Okay, the pay per view is going to have the champ, but this is also going to be. Are we boring you, Harper? I'm tired. I fuck. <laughs> hey, Harper, are you going to go and get you some later tonight, or are you uh, going to bed? No. Going He's going to bed. bed. He's tired. I feel him, man. That's yeah. I've been like that all that's, week. Yeah, that's what, really. That's yeah. when you know that you're a real man. Yeah, it's the daylight savings time that's fucking me up. It's when you're too tired to fuck. Dude, it's like 9 o'clock here. I've never been that dark. fucking tired. you never been that tired? 
No. Because you don't have kids. That's right. That's true, right? Yeah. Man, I have been that tired. Have been. I lived that tired. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Doc. Anything else? But this we was keep a, going? This, this was a clever way to do this to drum up interest for the secondary, you know, other top of the card feud going into the pay per view. Yeah, it is. Damn, I'm sure, this I'm is sure they're great. I'm sure all six men will be in WWF by the time this happens. But whatever. Nah, this this one this is going to go on for a while longer. This will have some legs on it. This we're about to get days. a new. Varsity Club number two, huh? Good God! Who was it? You oh gotta wait. Oh my God! You just, uh, just fucking. No, tell. I'm not saying it because I want you to see the first promo that that fool. I want to Google it. Oh my God! It's he's so terrible. <laughs> you know what's bad is I swear when we got to where the Varsity Club started their thing, I was like, man. God, the Varsity Club was so underrated. And I still think the Varsity Club is underrated. And I was like, holy Fair crap, enough. you know. Rotunda and, and Steiner, like the original version. I was like, oh, man, these guys are great. And then you think about Dr. Death. You're like, all right, yeah, yeah Doc, Doc fits in with him. It makes sense. So when you think about the Varsity Club, you always think, Dr. D- I, I, at least for me, in the past, before I, before I w- was really paying attention and started rewatching these things, I always thought of Dr. Death, Rotunda, Sullivan, and Steiner. Right. I had completely put out of my mind this other person that. Uh, yeah, me too. Did you Google it? Yeah, I don't remember that. Me okay, okay. So the Google in it is not even going to tell you half the story of it. Because once you see it, then you're going to be like, "What in the Hopper's going to cut a promo?" I don't even want to say it. You're going to cut a promo out of anger. He supposedly went to. Did you say? Devry. It wasn't Delgado, I can tell you that much. No. <laughs> Delgado. <laughs> yeah. That's the DQ. Hawk just went over the top rope, by the way, and um, Varsity Club are DQ'd. But anyway, uh, yeah, it wasn't Delgado. All right. So anyway, we will get to that, though. And, and like I said, it's, it's just mm. that first promo he cut, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Are we really? Mm-hmm. <sighs> That's what but we're, anyway. we're doing now. All right, so let's go to the Row Warriors after the DQ and hear what they have to say. Varsity Club, on February 20th, I wouldn't want to be your family. They're the ones that are going to have to mourn your pain and misery. You see, because we're going to give you misery. We're going to injure you. We could kill you. We'd like to kill you. But dead men don't dump. Jim Ross! Why did I ever start getting a solid? God damn! You try to break my arm! In Chicago, my manager better not be hurt because if he is, we will break every stinking bone in your body! Mike, we're gonna get out of here! All I know is that was short, and I do not want to wrestle them after what I just heard. Is that, that's where he said, God damn, right? Yeah. Hmm. Welcome. Sorry. That was that was something you you couldn't just say in 1989 on even like basic cable. Yeah. That was good shit. And well, it, it makes me want to get the pay per view. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell right you that much. Does. And that's the point right there where if you, I mean, we like to hear eloquent shit talking, but if there's a personal enough of an issue, sometimes it doesn't even matter the words that get said. All I he know is that was he could have he could have given that in Japanese and would have been like, damn, that was that was real. Well, no, you know what it was? It was they went out there. They just got DQ'd. You know, they got, you know, some hands thrown on them. The match ends in a DQ. They're pissed because of how it all went down. And that promo was 20 seconds. That's all. 20 seconds. It, and it did its job. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not 20. It was 42 seconds. I'm oh, looking at it right now. My time stamp. 42 seconds and it did its job. It did. So the match, and then a, we ain't out there for 15 minutes, and yada, 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 and blah, 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 and then, and then. Three people's music didn't hit for us to have a conversation about how much we hate each other. It's just 42 seconds, 
we got personal issues. Let's go to the pay per view and settle this thing. And, and somebody's gonna have to get their ass whooped. Somebody gonna have to get their ass whooped. Now, with that said, the Varsity Club is going to respond now. Let's hear what they have to say after we just heard from Hawk and Animal. Back, everyone. Jim Ross back with you here on World Championship Wrestling, surrounded by the Varsity Club. We've just seen one of the most dynamic situations ever. What are your thoughts on this thing? My thoughts are, Jim Ross, we took the Road Warriors down and turned them every way but loose. But being the big mouths they are, they had to get chairs and bring them in the ring. Well, I'm telling you what, Road Warriors, we can bring chairs in the ring and we can fight ourselves, pal. And Steiner, you got something that belongs to me, the world television title. I'm going to get my chance, Steiner, and I'm going to beat you and get my title back. All right, Doc, we saw you in action as well. Jim Ross, the bottom line is, is that we took it to you, Road Warriors. You know, one thing, one thing that athletes are taught, never get frustrated, never get mad. Because when you get frustrated or mad, you start making mistakes. As we've seen here, the Road Warriors, the bad bone, the ones who are fighters. Well, we took the fight out of you, Polly. Mike Rotunda, Kevin Sullivan, and myself, we took it down each time, took it down again. You know, they're the toughest we've ever faced. They're the baddest apples we ever saw. And tell us, you see, I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands either around Hawk's arm or Animal's arm one more time because it came this close. I thought I almost heard it snap one time. Maybe it didn't happen this time, but the next time it's us. Bones <laughs> breaking, Jim. All right, fans, so that from the Varsity Club. You've heard their comments. All right. Doc, thoughts on the Varsity Club right there responding to... The Warriors. Man, how many times do you hear people that just won't take a... I mean, how many people won't take a step back when it comes to, to hawk and animal? But they're like, man, we can't wait for another shot to break some shit on you. These guys are either dangerous or stupid. Either way, I gotta watch this. Either way, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Either, either way, it's a pay-per-view and I'm, they're talking to me that's into the right. building. They're either going to get killed or they're dumb enough to pull the, or they're, or they're dangerous enough to pull the shit off. And if I had the going to break some more fucking bones. That's right. And if I that had was the good. Main... And, and you know what? That, that is the best we've seen Dr. Death in a long time. Oh, yeah. He was good there. That was good. Yeah. He was a, and, and so the point is, if you get him in the right position, he can cut an all right promo. It's just. You got to get him in the right position. Truth be told, right there, no lies detected. Ain't that fucking hot? Ain't it's that not fucking, fucking hot? hot. <laughs> Hubbard, do you have anything from it? No, fuck off. Whoa! <laughs> He's tired. Now here's what's happened. What? Harper's the new doc. He's blown up because he's got back to work and he's tired. <laughs> he's like, man, if we just shut up. I know, we'll right? Done Look sooner, it, bitch. <laughs> now we got last week to show you. We got we got some oh, some fucker. yeah we got some things to show you from last week. <laughs> so right back, we're just gonna go ahead and do all of last week's show again. Right. We weren't here, and I think it was a super long edition. It was like an hour and forty minutes. Jesus. Well, we're we're actually we're actually almost done um because we only got one more promo and then there's one more match. So uh, two more with this one that's going on right now. Rick Steiner defeats Pretty Boy Lloyd. Steiner Steiner wrestles with his Letterman jacket the whole time. Hopper, anything from it? No. Doc? Nothing. It's just disrespectful to not even take your jacket off, but whatever. It's funny. He beats, he beats this guy's ass. That one clothesline. <laughs> that poor sap. Uh, he didn't see none of that coming, man. It was pretty damn bad. So, anyway, uh, let me get to the next promo uh, from uh, Paul Lee. Uh, here we go. Um, and yeah, let's go to Paul. I was about to say, we're not going to see too much of these guys uh, in the promotion, but here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here on World Championship Wrestling with Paul E. Dangerously and the original, I should stress, Midnight Express. You know, if you think about it, February 20th is just around the corner, and the fact of the matter is, Mr. Cornette, you just have a couple of days left in your career. You got what I'm saying? Because this isn't like a scratch where you put a Band-Aid on. 
This is like when you lose your teeth. This is like when your hair falls out. This is just like death, my man. This is permanent. It's irrevocable. You're done. You're finished. Because you see, Jim Cornette, I took your man right here. I took the name of your tag team. I took your spot. I took your position. I took your gimmick. And so help me, you know what, Jim Cornette, on February 20th, my man, I'm going to take your job. You got me? I'm taking his job because Jim Cornette in a six-man tag team match, you're out of the NWA. All right. It was real quick. I thought Paulie was okay there. He's he's frustrated. He's mad with Corny. Any other thoughts, Doc, on it? I didn't really like that one. Yeah, I think well, and, you, you saw Randy's got his hands in his pocket, like he's just standing there, just like well, my problem like he's with waiting it is, in line somewhere. Is, you know, he's saying I got the original Midnight Express, but he's admitting to stealing everything from Corny. Well, he is a heel, so does he really need to tell the truth? Well, it helps. Okay. Is that why you always lie? No, you're the heel. You love lying. Oh my god. I'm not, I'm not a heel. I'm I'm just a common man that you comes tell to work more every day. More lies than anyone I know when you are wow. in the middle of this show. That's fucked up. And it's true is what it is. It is it is fucked up. I can't believe you would say that about me. My feelings are a little bit hurt. Man, Doc, you remind me of one of these cruel connection guys. Um after that promo, Cornette's Midnight Express defeat the cruel connection. Cornette yaps for a minute on commentary. Cornette mentions we're about to uh beat Kermit the Frog number one and two. These guys with these Green outfits, lime green. Kermit wasn't lime green, but that's what Cornette said. Anyway, Midnight wins. Doc, any thoughts on this uh, closing match? This is how they go off here. Man, that's not even lime green. That's neon. Yeah, neon, that's, that's fucking name. highlighter green. Yeah. Highlighter yellow, I should say. It look, Actually, it's more yellow. Now that you say that, you're right. That is neon green. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Anyway, thoughts, Doc? No, I'm ready to see Stan from last week. All right. So with that said, (laughs) um, we got to rate this thing. Before we do so, I want to remind you, we've got two things coming up. There are many things on our Patreon feed, but two new things coming up on our Patreon feed. We got the Clash, uh, the next Clash, Clash 5, in a ridiculous Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat segment will be up on our Patreon feed in the next day or so at tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. Uh, if you go there and sign up, you'll get not only this clash that we're about to do, but all of the clashes we've done and the Jim Crocker, you know, I'll say WCW and WA pay-per-views up to this point. Also, uh, coming up in another week and a half, after the next Saturday night we do, we have the Shy town Rumble pay-per-view that will be up as well on the Patreon feed, tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. Along with that, there's over 200 or 300 now Patreon-exclusive episodes for you to enjoy on our Patreon feed. So consider signing up if you're not a patron. Okay, Doc. Uh, what do you? I went first last week with the rating. What are you going to rate this one? Well, it was, sh- it was short, so that helps. I don't have a lot of time, free time in my life. Okay. Um. I like everything that's going on still. I mean, lots of changes as we talked about last week, but everything's still fairly entertaining. Um, I think I'm going to say B+. Plus. B+. Plus. Okay. Um, I'll go next. I- I'll give it an A-. minus. I thought this was fine. I like the six-man. I thought we did some good stuff there. Uh, so overall, yeah, give me give me an A- minus on it. Harper, what are you going to give it? A B+. Plus. Okay. Fair I enough. mean, it's fucking forty-eight minutes long, and he got that that fucking three-man tag with the with the Varsity Club and the Road Warriors. I'll take that. I'll take it. Who too. wouldn't? Yeah, who wouldn't? That's a good point. Um, okay, so we need to give out some Rolex. Uh, before we do so, remember, consider using our Amazon referral link. It is a great way to support this show without spending anything extra. If you're already shopping there. Uh, the show will get a little bit of kickback in return. Go to tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Give that link to wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever you have in your life. Family members as well. 
Give them that link and make sure they use it every single time they purchase something off of Amazon. Again, tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. Uh, Doc, um, you are, well, who are you giving your Rolex to? This was a whole lot easier back when Arn was here. Kind of was, wasn't it? Also, did I miss Rick Steamboat? Um, you did. No, you didn't miss him. He wasn't on there. Mm. You don't really need him on there because what's about to happen at the clash? Okay. Well, you know what I'm talking I'm about, right? The, say, the segment with him and Flair. I know what you're talking about. I'm gonna say, give me a uh, corny for the Rolex. Okay. Um. I think I gotta go. I'm gonna go Flair only because of just him going off on Steamboat at the very beginning. Who you give yours to, Hopper? I give mine to the fucking Hawk. Hey, for, for nice. the, that fucking promo. That's true too. I did. That's true too. Okay, fair enough. So Hawk, Flair, and Corny. There you go. All right, Doc. You want to set up what we're about to show Hopper, and maybe this will wake him up before we go off air tonight. Right. So last week, Corny's going to cut a promo, and you're going to have a hard time concentrating on anything he has to say. But what I want you to really focus on is how many different looks Stan Lane has going on within one get-up and outfit. And how ridiculous he's looking at the crowd. He's just, he's a mess. Look at this guy. Look at that, Harper. Harper, I'm going to play it, and just pay attention to Stan. We want your thoughts on Stan when this is over. Here it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here on World Championship Wrestling. You know, I was thinking about Paul E. Dangerously, but not for very long. But when I did, I thought he could be considered the, the rotten fruits of his mother's labor. Would you not agree with that? I think he's a rotten fruit, all right. As a matter of fact, I'll amend that he's a fruit, period. Let me tell you, Paul E. Dangerously, he's got this whole thing built up to where it's a high noon showdown. Where it's gunfight at the OK Corral between me and Watch him. Watch Bobby and Stan. This is Town Rumble. This is Chicago, the Windy City. It's the home of Prohibition, the Roaring Twenties, Al Capone, Elliot Ness, the Untouchables. Hey, did you ever watch the Untouchables on TV? All the time. Like that night in the Southside Chicago apartment of Frank Nitty, Al Capone's gangland enforcer, Paulie Dangerously and his band of cutthroats were plotting the demise of Jim Cornette and his Untouchables. Little did they know <laughs> that Cornette and his men had already plotted to send them up the river. That's where you're going to be, Polly Dangerously. You're going to be taking a ride up the river. No, wait. You're going to have a cement overcoat on, and you're going to be in the river. Because it's going to be like the Untouchables meeting Capone's mob. When I open up my violin case, I'm going to have a tennis racket. When you open up your violin case, you're going to have a telephone. And the collision is going to come. The clash is going to come. And the guy who gets pinned is going to leave the NWA forever. And there must be a winner. So I want you to remember, Polly, what kind of stakes you got. And I want you to remember this too, Polly Dangerously. I guarantee you this. Your day has come because you think you're going to be the one to come in here and take Jim Cornette's job, brother. You're far from being right. You're sadly mistaken. And as far as beautiful Bobby and Sweet Stan goes, everybody knows that they're the real Midnight Express. All evil men's time must come. Capone died a broken man. Hitler blew his brains out. They fried Ted Bundy two weeks ago. And Polly, you're next. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the way it is. All right, Hopper. Um, one thing I want you to see before you comment. Watch Bobby and Stan. You see that little right there? Watch Bobby and Stan. Stan, they see something in the crowd. And Bobby touches Stan's arm right here. <laughs> something's well. going <laughs> something's going on they see something because they're both kind of smiling and smirking a little bit um, and it's so simple because they're here's the thing when you're living their gimmick they're in on some shit we ain't a privy to on every level yeah um but what do you think about stan right there Hopper? what is that um, fucking jacket Looks like the one Schwarzenegger wore in fucking Terminator. He's got a duster on with the sleeves rolled up. Yeah. That's a duster? 
I guess. But the other point is, what's on underneath it? An orange tank. He's got, like, cowboy garb on the outside with an orange tank top, the purple glasses, the jewelry. He's all 1980s. I just noticed the pinky ring there. I mean, yeah. Ah, Look at that. It's like a kid fucking colored them. (laughs) 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 Oh, yeah, it's true. I mean, it's like, shit, I got four fucking colors left in the crayon box. He's got, hold on. He's got, okay, so. Everything he's wearing is ridiculous in its own right, and then it's all paired together. So, Bobby touches him and Stan smirks. And Bobby's like, you can tell Bobby's trying to like no sell something. Look at Bobby. Touches Stan. Stan starts laughing. See, he's laughing. He's laughing. <laughs> Stan's got two pinky rings on. Or let's assume a Rolex on the left wrist, a bracelet on the right, and a heron bone with a orange deep scoop tank top. Jeans and the duster and the purple. I don't know how else to explain. It's the, it's a glorious thing. Like I want to see Hopper dress like that. I'll fucking dress like that. I worry, fuck, dude, fuck wearing that that, that with that fucking duster. Fuck that. <laughs> That's Look how. At him. That right there is how you win a Rolex. Yes. Uh, but they're out there having fun, man. Him and him and Bobby see something, and they are telecom te- communicating through telepathy. This is great. All right, uh, Harper. Any other thoughts uh, on Stanfield here? No, it's just he. It's like a kid coloring him. Like, okay, I'm gonna give him purple fucking sunglasses. I'm gonna make his shirt orange. Uh oh, Harper's talking. Uh oh, uh oh. Was that you, Doc, or Harper? Not me. I'm ready, man. Oh boy, yeah. Harper's getting a text. He's he's gonna have to like now. He's gonna have to do crank a couple of rails so that he can make it out tonight. That's, that's nice. Right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, I guess that's gonna about wrap things up tonight. So, so are you gonna hit? Are you gonna hit the trail tonight? Now? No. Fuck no. I'm he's, tired. He's, he's tired, man. He's been on his feet yeah. all day. He's exhausted. Uh-huh. He's going yeah, to bed. I can I see. Mean, you, you never know what happens when you go out, man. No. I already <laughs> did that last night. It's exciting. No. No. <laughs> All right. So, well, before we get out of here, a couple of things. Uh, shout out to our Vantage Point, the retro wrestling podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn. The northern version of ETT, slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us. Please support them. Check them out. Also, check out the Bottom Line cast with Mike Pru and JV, who do our ECW show on the Patreon feed. Check them out. They do the Bottom Line cast, which is a which is a podcast on the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that's about going to wrap things up. I don't have any other announcements. Doc, do you? Um, no, you don't. Hopper, what about you? Anything? Uh, anything you want to no. say? Anything? He's tired. <laughs> now I know how I sound when I get tired. Uh, the man let's, is tired. Why don't we do? Why don't we do a couple of uh, PWIs or something? <laughs> no, <he's... laughs> we're here. We're here. We might as well hang out. Hopper's done. All right, Hopper. Uh, let's get out of here. You hit the tagline and take us home. Book it, bitch. Ooh.